Good morning and thank you for joining us for All Things Heart. I'm Alexis Del Cid. We are working hard to bring you some pretty incredible shows this coming fall. Until then, we'll be sharing some encore presentations of our favorite episodes every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. all summer long. So sit back and enjoy this best of All Things Heart. From the University of Kansas Health System. I am amazed. The team here is great. I came on a Tuesday and then by Saturday I had a heart in me. I have never seen a group of people work together so good as this team of heart specialists. I mean, it's just unreal. Stand by to set up show. And the Dolph C. Simons Three, Jr. Family two, Broadcast one. Studio. Roll. Always makes you feel like you're the most important patient on the planet. I felt heard and that was really big. This is All Things Heart. Good morning. I'm Jessica Lovell in for Alexis Del Cid today. Welcome back to All Things Heart. The patient you'll meet today is no stranger to hospital stays. I was 19 days old when I had my first heart procedure. Two decades later, she felt so great she ignored major symptoms that something else was wrong with her heart. Plus, come along as we take you behind the mask to meet the medical team she has since dubbed the dynamic duo. We want you to get your questions answered today, so make sure you send those in to us on YouTube, Facebook, and All Things Heart. You'll find links to those right there on your screen. Well, a bride-to-be put her wedding plans on hold for a heart procedure. Kaylee Patterson underwent a heart valve replacement procedure that is the first of its kind here at the health system. She was born with a heart defect, and this isn't her first time needing medical help, but this procedure was different. She was back to her typical routine in days. If you really want to see Kaylee Patterson, Paz and Marthy light up, just ask her about her job. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I love it. Working as a special education teacher with the kiddos at Kip Endeavor Academy is what fills her heart, but her heart has had its share of complications. I was 19 days old when I had my first heart procedure. I was born and my valve was not letting blood go out into the body. So the doctors had to go in and open it up. Kaylee would have another surgery when she was 14 and for many years after that felt great. So much so that when she started having chest pains, chest pressure and dizziness when she was 28, she dismissed it. At first I was like, oh, I'm just getting old. Out of the mouths of babes. Let's be clear, she was only 28. Kaylee would have her third heart surgery, a valve replacement. They did it all through your leg. Yep, all through my leg. Like no opening up my chest. Nothing like that. And I was able to go back to work in a week, which was kind of surprising. Dr. Zoran was like, yep, get on the treadmill for 30 minutes a day, go back to work in a week. It was amazing. She affectionately calls her cardiothoracic surgeon, Dr. Trip Zorn, and cardiologist, Dr. Peter Tadros, the dynamic duo. I love those two. Dr. Zorn is so like to the point, he's very professional, and he's just so kind. Uh, Dr. Tadros, I don't think I've ever met a person who just brings so much calm to a space. Like, I just wish I could hang, <laughs> hang out with him. And Kaylee now has an important message for anyone watching. Never dismiss symptoms having to do with your heart, no matter what your age. If you're having chest pain, it's better to get it checked out than to just let it simmer. And we are so glad to have Kaylee joining us this morning, along with thoracic surgeon, Dr. Tripp Zord, and Kaylee's interventional cardiologist, Dr. Peter Tadros. Kaylee, so we just want to clarify, you were actually 29 years old at the time of that third procedure, where you then dubbed these two guys, Dr. Zorn and Dr. Tadros, the dynamic duo. Of course, we know they're a big deal, but to hear it come from you is really nice. So what, what made them so special in your eyes? Um, I just... I can't thank them enough. Um, I think the two of them balance each other out extremely well. Um, throughout the process, they work together really uh, effectively and they both made me feel confident that the procedure would go well. Um, they both showed me a lot of care and explained everything in a way that made myself and my family feel safe. Uh-oh, oh, okay, um, sorry. Um, my fa mother feels that the best doctors are ones that if you have a question on your mind, they answer it before you get a chance to ask it. And that happened a lot throughout this process. 
So they really kind of wrap their arms around you, you know, physically with taking care of you, but then just mentally making you feel really comfortable and happy. So tell us a little bit about how you're feeling now. Um, I'm feeling great. I haven't had any chest pains or symptoms and um, I have been feeling great emotionally, physically. I just feel back to normal. Um, there was a while after the surgery where things were overwhelming, but now I feel like myself again. So what's the biggest difference, Kaylee, from this most recent procedure compared to the first two that you had? Um, I can't remember the first one because I was 19 days old, but for the high school one, um, I remember bouncing back extremely quickly. Um, I remember going to having the procedure on Friday and being in school the following Monday. Um, I also remember I didn't feel like overwhelmed or sad or anything. I just felt like normal. Um, this time it did take a while to get back to what I would consider normal. Um, a lot of things in my life were overwhelming for me and in ways that they hadn't been what prior to the procedure. Um, and like I became really tired throughout the day and it took me a while just to adjust to that and get back to my normal or to accept what my new norm was. The new normal, we talk about that a lot, Dr. Zord. What's it like to see Kaylee here today? Well, that was cool. Uh, so, uh, you know, obviously she's a neat lady and, and uh, it was an interesting time with her getting, uh, you know, with the wedding plans and everything. And she has a relationship with some one of the liaisons for the hospital that we, that's how we actually got to know her at first. Um, um, so um, it's great to see her. We don't always get this because, you know, when, when people are done with surgery, they, they go back to their main doctors and we don't always get the follow-up. So. You're hoping to never see them again in a right, good way. Exactly. In a good way. If things so, go really well, we don't get we don't talk you again. You don't get so. to see them. What's it like, Dr. Tadros, with this the full circle moment? Oh, it's it's fantastic. It's just so this is the most gratifying part of our job is hearing this feedback and knowing that someone is doing well and you know, yeah. to deliver this in a minimally invasive way where, you know, you're recovering quickly is just just very gratifying. And we heard Kaylee mention in her story, you know, she goes, it was just me getting older. I mean, she was only 28, 29 at the time. Um, that doesn't seem old to the rest of us, but when you've been born with a heart condition, that, that can seem old yep. to somebody. So uh, Dr. Tadros, just tell us a little bit about this heart defect and how rare it is or how common. So she she has a thing called pulmonic, or had a thing called pulmonic stenosis, which is narrowing of the, the main valve with, from the right ventricle to the lungs. Uh, and that's what they did the original surgery to, and that's the narrowing so it's uh, preventing blood flow uh, and when they repaired it, um, it she did well for a long time and then subsequently became very leaky and she started having the blood leak back into the heart and the heart began to dilate and not work as well so this was an opportunity to, re to replace the valve completely with a brand new valve with a minimally invasive approach do we know what causes this defect it's congenital for most people there are some genetic syndromes but it's congenital meaning it's just a, a birth defect so Dr. Zorn, what made this procedure a first? So um, it was a new device, um, but the procedure itself, actually this valve was the first one that anybody ever approached from a catheter base, so a minimally invasive approach. So back in 2000 was the first um, pulmonic valve that was replaced going back up through uh, blood vessels in the leg. and, and um, and that space has largely been dominated by progress uh, along what we call TAVR or the aortic valve replacement. Mm -hmm. And so what's nice about this valve um, is that uh, there are a lot of patients that are now surviving their operations as children that are uh, become adults and the exact procedures that allow them to survive as kids uh, but now becomes a problem for long term as adults. And, and that's what she had which was um, um, now the, the that outflow tract, trying to find something on that that would fit in there. And this new device actually allows a, a broader range of anatomy for us to do that. So yeah. describe this valve, you know, what's it look like, what's it feel like, what's it made of? So there's actually two parts to it. So it's got an outer frame um, that is, um, that we put in that, that allows, it, it serves as a dock or a landing spot for the actual valve. And that frame is the part that actually allows a little bit broader anatomy for us to use. 
Um, the valve itself is actually very similar uh, to the valves that we use um, every day. We did one this morning. Um, we'll do another one this afternoon um, that uh, we put in the aortic position. Um, and that valve has leaflet data on it and you know, a long history that we, we have a better idea of how it's gonna work. Um, and it's a, it's a valve that's very easy to deploy and position. Um, so she's not the first to ever um, uh, have this procedure, but she was the first in the area to get this particular valve, which we think will be play an important role for these patients going forward. And we have this video of, of you in the OR, and we're going to talk about what kind of what's happening here. That catheter travels up from the leg, up through the torso, then inside the heart. How delicate is that process in guiding this this through the body? How are you doing it? Yeah, do you want that one? Sure. Uh, I, you know, so it's, uh, you know, what we do is we. We, we use a wire to get through the, this area. And there's a, quite a few bends and turns. There's some almost some right angle turns, so it takes a little bit of effort to get there. And then once we have our wire in place, then we're able to guide the device, uh, the docking station for the valve into place. It gets deployed, and then it serves, as Dr. Zorn said, a dock, and then the valve then continue, follows. In this video you're seeing right now, this is the valve being deployed. It's That's The valve is uh, on a balloon, and, um, and the balloon then expands the valve and then in, it expands the stent frame of the valve, the metal frame, and then inside that metal frame is the brand new valve that starts working immediately. So talk us through the differences for a patient between a, a catheter procedure like this and something that sounds like a really big deal like open heart surgery. So for, for the open heart surgery, so all of those patients have had at least one and, and many have had multiple operations. Um, and each time going back through the chest, through what we call a sternotomy, which is dividing the sternum, um, ha carries some risk because there's scar tissue, and that scar tissue can be adhered to the back of the back of the breastbone or the sternum, and and can be more difficult to get into. Um, this is not an uncommon procedure that we do. Um, we d we do a lot of redo operations. Those operations take typically between about three and six hours to do. Um, the, the, the catheter based ones are somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half usually uh, for that. Um, the benefit for the patient is they usually don't have to go to the ICU after a catheter based and most patients go home the next day. And that's really nice. How do you know who this is right for? How do you determine that when you're when you two are discussing a plan for a patient? I mean, it's a, it's really a discussion. It depends on the patient. So it, you know how suitable you know is the anatomy. Um, you know, have they you know what's the risk of undergoing surgery? You know, what's going on in their life um, too. So uh, it, you know, this is the, one of the advantages of having a multidisciplinary approach. Having a cardiac surgeon, an interventional cardiologist, we're able to sit down together and really come up with a game plan and offer options. Um, but, you know, as Dr. Zorn said, the, the biggest benefit, I mean, cardiac surgery is very safe now, but the biggest benefit is the recovery. Um, so it's a rapid recovery uh, and it's a much less invasive procedure. Uh, and in this particular case, this allows options for future therapies too. So that's what my next question was, is this procedure safer technically than open heart surgery? So uh, they're both safe. Uh, the, the risks of major complications are probably a little bit less with the catheter based, but a lot of the other things, the risk of transfusion, uh, wound infections, um, long stays in the hospital, uh, long stays on the ventilator, those kind of things are markedly less with a catheter based. So really about the recovery yep. and how that patient's gonna recover from an individual. Yep procedure or plan. Yeah. Dr. Tadros, walk us through Kaylee's follow-up echo and what we're seeing in it. I think we have some photos or are we looking at some images or video guys? There we go. Okay, what are we looking at? So, well this this actually is showing the left ventricle of the heart, but what what we see typically in the echo, what we're looking at is her right ventricle that uh, shows the heart function. And what because that valve was leaking into that right ventricle, her right ventricle had really dilated. And um, with that dilation, you know, leads to the fatigue and inability to exercise and all these things. Uh, once we remove that leakiness and the valve is competent with a brand new valve, her right ventricle has actually gotten smaller and working better. So I think some of the you know, time to recover was just also her right ventricle needed a, a few months to kind of remodel and become a, you know, a better functioning or organ. So what will follow up long term look like with you and Kaylee? 
so she actually follows with Dr. Lippman, who is one of our adult congenital. Um, so I'm, I tend to be more in the procedural realm, but he's an adult congenital uh, physician who has taken over for Dr. Mulhern since he's retired and um, uh, and is doing a fantastic job. So she'll see him regularly and she'll get follow-up echoes and you know he'll she'll he'll keep a good good eye on her and track and make sure she's doing well. So and Kaylee, well. we've talked a lot about that recovery. What was your recovery like after the procedure? Um, it was. It was hard. Um, there, it definitely took a lot out of me because I had to be like, okay, I have to get up. I have to, I have to make myself go for walks. I have to make myself continue to clean my house. I have to continue being an adult. Um, and for about the first month, uh, especially the first few weeks, it was hard just to because I was like, oh, I'm getting really tired um with all these things that were very normal for myself prior um so it definitely it took a while for me to just to like not be tired <laughs> yeah it makes a difference okay so no offense to you guys but we're going to get to the good stuff like her getting married yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, <laughs> is that is the good stuff, stuff. Yeah. that is the good Absolutely. stuff um, yeah. you got your wedding back on track tell us a little bit about how life's going tell us about the new husband the wedding give us all the details um so we have the ceremony in late june but we've already signed the papers heaven is just the best partner I could ever have. I actually remember right before going into the procedure room, um, there was something that was put in my IV that I believe was supposed to relax me. And um, he was also in the room, but I remember just, there was a moment where every single person in the room, there was double of them. And for some reason, he was the only one that he was just like a single person. And like, he was my anchor in that moment. He was just like, he just got me through that and i remember thinking oh i don't i don't want to go uh but i also knew that uh i was going to be okay and all things were going to be great and he was going to be waiting for me well and i'm sure these docs can attest just that support from family and friends i mean that's so much a big part of recovery right and getting yep. through it mentally Absolutely. It makes a big difference yep all right, let's talk about the kiddos. And by kiddos, I mean your kids at school. Um, tell us a little bit about the kids at KIPP. Oh my gosh, they're so much fun. Um, they're learning so much. I tend to forget how much kids have to learn. They have to learn how to create relationships with others. They have to learn how to use their executive function skills. They have to learn how to create boundaries for themselves and how to, how to just handle hard situations, all while trying to learn how to read, write, do math and science, kick a ball. They just have to, they have so much that they have, they have to learn and they do it all through love and care and sometimes with big emotions, but those are things that we're learning how to process with them. Absolutely, teaching the empathy and, and helping them along. I'm sure they're glad that you're, you're doing well. I wanna to get to some community questions from our viewers. Leslie wants to know, since this was a first of its kind at the health system, was there any additional training or preparation, uh, Dr. Zorn, that had to happen? So there's a little bit, you have to get prepared for the device, but actually, uh, as Dr. Tadros was saying earlier, this is actually a very similar to what we do with other devices. So the, the positioning of the wires and then ultimately deploying the device requires some hands-on just learning how the device works, but this is all about pre-operative planning and measuring with the CT scans and those kind of things. So um, it does involve some uh, extra training up front, um, but it's um, this space is, is it got continual involvement. There's new devices coming along all the time, and they tend to build upon the previous ones. So we're, there's able to be, um, you know, you can build on the foundation that you have before. Amelia wants to know, if Kaylee didn't have issues for years, then what would have caused that need for the third surgery? You know, it just, the, the heart can actually deal with that leaky leakiness for a long time, but then it reaches a tipping point where it no longer works as well, it dilates and you start dating symptoms. So there's a long period of, of plateau where things are fine, but then you reach this tipping point where suddenly there are symptoms. And then that's really, you know, when things need to get get done and taken care of because otherwise it becomes irreversible and the symptoms can lead to even you know worse uh, dysfunction of the heart.
We use the word procedure a lot on our, on our medical programs, but Jim wants to know the difference between a heart procedure and a heart surgery. Yeah, that line's getting less and less uh, easy to call. It's getting blurred. Right. Uh, so, you know, typically procedures have been called, uh, you know, the shorter, you know, caths or pacemakers or, or things like that, and operations involve uh, making an incision and opening. Um, but, uh, you know, our two disciplines being cardiology and cardiac surgery have gotten so much closer that I think that line is, you know, that terminology is a little bit vague and you may hear it, uh, even the medical professionals crossing the line there. Right, they're not that so yeah. far apart yeah. as, as they used to feel. Uh, yeah. How many patients are needing help uh, of your patients that you see are needing these valve replacements? Is this pretty regular? Well, we have we have kind of a selection bias because we you know are the ones who do the procedures. So a lot of you know referring physicians, cardiologists in the region, and obviously internally, KU send us these patients. So that's a large percent of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're on the receiving end. So when they evaluate their patients and their patients have a need, they'll send it to the valve clinic, and we do a multidisciplinary approach to assess what's the best treatment choices for those patients. So Terry wants to know: Will Kaylee most likely need another surgery, or is it too soon to tell? She will for sure. So um, she has a tissue valve in, and the benefit of the tissue valve is it doesn't require uh, long-term blood thinners or anticoagulation. Um, but the tissue valve will wear out. Now the time frame is hard to know because um, you know we we don't have 40, 50-year data, uh, which matters to a patient like uh, Kaylee on on how you know what's the exact course. So some of this we're still. Um, we are, you know, paving the way uh, with these patients and, and um, establishing how we're going to treat them. So the nice part about the valve she has in is we can repeat this procedure again, um, and um, but we have no idea what the technology is going to be in the next ten years or so when when that time may come around. So that's good news. That's good. Yeah. News. yeah. yeah. But there's a waiting period. So how will she know? Is this something she's just going to keep getting checked? Will she feel yeah. different? So how she, is she going to Yeah. Know? So one is keeping track of her symptoms and then two is actually getting serial imaging and again this is why you want to see your doctor to, like Dr. Lipman to make sure that things are going well. So she'll get monitored and you know hopefully we'll, have, we'll start having an idea when the, when the time comes. But like Dr. Zorn said we don't really know the, the lifespan of this valve. This may be 10 to 15 years or longer. So and then we will have an option to do a valve and valve. Uh, and, and her cardiologist is yeah. somebody who spends all his time focused on right. adult congenital patients just like uh, Kaylee who've, who've survived their operations and, and are growing uh, with their with their heart heart conditions. So, so Sadie wants to know, last question is, what made, what made Kaylee such a good candidate for this new procedure or the, this new so uh, she was a candidate for both. In other words, if we didn't have this procedure, we could have done open surgery. She's in good enough health to tolerate an operation, and um, if this were, you know, ten or five years ago, that's what she would have had. Um, the the part that made it good for her is her anatomy, uh, and what I mean by that is how her outflow tract had been reconstructed in the past. So we get the CT scan, and we have the. Uh, we have an idea from the operative notes previously, but we have the CT scan that shows us where we're going to try and lay this valve, and we can measure precisely uh, the landing uh, zones for these. So that's that's how we decided that for her. All right, let's get to our final thoughts, Kaylee. Let's start with you. Um, I, I am just very thankful for all the doctors I've had in my life. I cannot thank them enough. Um, they've gotten me to where I am, and I'm just very thankful for them. Dr. Zorn, final thought from you. Well, it's great to see her. Uh, this is, the, uh, as uh, Peter said earlier, this is the fun part. So we get to take the, the science and the new devices and the new procedures and um, and see how they do impact lives. And so wishing you the best. You got some stuff coming up with the new, new, new wedding and all. So congratulations and, and, and good luck. Very exciting. Dr. Tadros. Yeah, just seeing Kaylee smile, it just makes this all totally worthwhile. So I think that's fantastic. And then, yeah. and then one serious note, I just, uh, you know, just like Kaylee, I think with a lot of congenital patients, they get better and then they get lost to follow up. They don't see their doctors regularly. And I think that's a really big problem in the adult congenital world. So making sure that you, even if you're feeling great, getting regular follow ups with your adult congenital cardiologist is really critical. Okay, you too. Don't go anywhere. Just, I'm not done with you just yet. Okay. Okay, so as you just saw, our surgeons and doctors do amazing work inside these hospital walls, but what are they like when they're not saving lives? Now for a secret look into the guardians of healthcare at the University of Kansas Health System, let's go behind the mask.
right, let's get to know Dr. Zorn. Tell uh, us about some of these pictures that uh, you sent in to us. Lovely wife, I take yeah, it? Yeah, that's Jen. Uh, that's my wife. Uh, that's down at Crown Center. Uh, it was actually down, uh, we, we were down there in that area. It was during the draft. Um, oh, no, how the, was it? Uh, uh, we didn't go to the draft. We were in the area. That was a day that a lot of things got canceled because it was so windy yeah. that it was blowing everything over. So uh, I think it was either Saturday or Sunday of that weekend. And uh, well, I'm uh, sure, we're down uh, at Crown Center. She appreciates you getting away from the hospital and hanging with her a bit. Yeah. All right, you golf? Uh, yes. You yes. golf, okay. Yes. So that's actually my oldest and my youngest. Uh, we have uh, five children, and the one in the middle is Tucker, my oldest, and that's Briggs, my youngest. Of the three, who's the best right there? Oh, no doubt me. No <laughs> doubt me. You don't let them forget it either, Although no, right? no, they are fast, uh, up and coming. So, okay. uh, yes. Well, you have to produce, like, golf partners, right? I mean, you know, if you have yes. your buddies, but then yes. it's like if you have built-in golf partners yes. like your kids. But now I'm dealing with the fact that, you know, every now and then they hit it a little further than I do, and yeah. they do not fail to remind me of I'm it. Sure so, yeah. I'm sure they don't. That's good. Yeah. For them. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Tadros, you're up next. Okay. Um, tell us a little. Well, first of all, we just had you on our show because you, you and your wife shared an incredible story just a couple of weeks ago. And tell us a little bit about your family. So uh, the first picture was was the family was my wife Deanna and my two daughters and uh, uh, yeah and my uh, my oldest daughter got married just about a, a year and a half ago. So married one off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Star Trek. Oh my gosh, I, I don't know that. where you get these photos. Okay. Yeah, where is this? What's happening? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. That's actually San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, you skip by that other. Uh, that yeah, other okay, yeah, nothing yeah. to see here. Nothing uh, to right, see here, right? Let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So you're gonna, do, you, do you like to travel? Do you travel uh, a bunch? We, we travel some. Uh, you know, we just went on our bucket list trip to Israel with our church, which was fantastic. Oh, nice. And uh, so that was really wonderful going through Israel and <clears throat> went over to Petra, you know, where the Indiana Jones uh, movie was filmed, and it was really amazing. Okay, so. now you're speaking my language, yeah. like movie sites. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so that was awesome. So, okay, that's awesome. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. That's great. Okay, now I have one last question because yeah. before we started, you had some really good, interesting news about our favorite coffee. Good for the heart? Oh, yeah, so oh, okay. yeah, so coffee is excellent for the heart. There's a lot of data showing that the anti it's not the caffeine, but the antioxidants that actually causes less AFib, less cardiovascular disease, improved mortality. The data is kind of weak. It's not like good randomized data, but every single epidemiologic study is showing a positive. So this is a new study. I'm totally there are hang multiple new studies, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. hanging my hat. I don't care how okay. weak it is, I'm hanging my hat on it. <laughs> exactly. We choose the studies or two that we want to believe. Absolutely. So, yeah, exactly. yeah. And we're not yeah. messing around and, when and it comes to our caffeine. Right, no. All right guys, thanks so much for being with us. Kaylee, thank you so much. Thanks to all of our viewers. We appreciate each and every one of you for joining us.